when he told us what happened, I have never been that empty before in my entire life. Numb, stunned, I was stunned. February of 2017. It's like living a mom's worst nightmare. Desiree Turner, a young, vibrant, ambitious 14-year-old teenager, is shot and left for dead in this canal in the small northern Utah town of Smithfield. He said, we're gonna put your daughter on life flight and send her to primary children's because she's been shot in the back of the head. No way, did you really say what my ears heard you say? Disbelief, shock, fear. Because this was such a shock. These things don't usually happen in Cache Valley. The outlook from doctors was grim. People who get gunshot wounds to the head don't live. But miraculously, Desiree did make it. And not only did she survive, she is thriving in a big way. This is Desiree Turner today. Thank you. Now 19 years old. Good boy. Now, please give it up for our homecoming queen, Desiree Turner. She still graduated from high school on time after missing two years. Won a state 4-H competition with her dog, Snoopy. Manages her own flower garden. So now we're gonna turn the time over to Sister Turner. And is now serving as a missionary really for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I would definitely say it's a miracle. Even she's surprised by her incredible comeback story. What do you think of being here today, five years later? It's a real shocker if you like think about what my injury is and what my life should be. I should be a vegetable. I should not be able to talk. I should not be able to walk. She is such an amazing young lady. <clears throat> and to see the joy in her eyes as she goes out and serves and does what she does. Yes. It's just such a blessing, not only to her, but to those of us around her. Desiree's words she uttered five years ago here at Primary Children's Hospital the day she left have held true. Still with that bullet lodged in her head, she let everyone know. I told my dad that I am tougher than a bullet. I have a knot in my stomach. Coming back here to this site still haunts Desiree Turner. It's hard to come back here, especially on this day. That's why today she has her older brother by her side. I want a hug. This is only the third time she's returned since the unthinkable happened. Today's February 16th. We are here exactly five years to the day her nightmare began. Five years ago, I was shot in the head. Tell me what emotions you're feeling on this five year anniversary. My heart is like pounding out of my chest, but yet it's frozen still. It's, it's a hard day for all of us. It affected many, many people. But still, Heavenly Father was there. For Des, there is something to celebrate. We celebrate life. We celebrate that we made it. As a school age kid, this canal was a place of fun and laughter, a place to hang out and enjoy friends. That's exactly what she thought was happening during the late afternoon of February 16th, 2017. A day I'll never forget. Desiree says she was with their friend, 16-year-old Coulter Peterson, and his friend, 16-year-old Jason Decker. We were hanging out, having a good time. I turned to go walk home, and they called me back to find a missing ring. That used to be the last thing Desiree remembered before waking up in the hospital. But now after flashbacks and nightmares, Desiree says she's remembering a little bit more. I remember looking down, and I feel major pain in my head. I remember fighting, trying to crawl, trying to find someone. And I remember how cold it was that night. What kind of emotions does that bring as you think of that? Lonely. I'm struggling and fighting by myself. What Desiree didn't realize is that Coulter Peterson had shot her in the back of the head as she looked for the ring, a disturbing premeditated murder plot the boys had come up with to take Desiree out. With the ridiculous claim, her social media messages were annoying them. The single bullet still remains lodged in her head to this day. X-rays show the path the bullet took. Meanwhile at home... I remember calling her and saying, hey, where are you? But no answer, no replies. April Turner, Desiree's mom, was getting very worried. Desiree was supposed to be home by 4.30 and never showed. Because Desiree was a responsible girl, it did worry me right from the start. 
wait, she's not here, and she would be. Her dad, Matt, was out of town on a business trip. Every chance I had uh, cell phone service, I'd call April to find out. Police, family, friends, and neighbors were all called. A missing persons report was filed, and the word went out over social media. As the hours passed, the Turners became more and more fearful. And I had this feeling like, oh, and I, it, it wasn't a good feeling. It was about 11 o'clock at night when two family friends say they got a very strong impression to do something, anything, go out and search, just don't go to sleep. It was almost like this little angel on my shoulder was saying, shut up, get your stuff, get your gear, go, because you're gonna find her. Christy Barfus yeah. and Sue Hintz felt this pull and I just couldn't stop. Have known the Turner family for years. In fact, Sue was Desiree's third grade elementary teacher. What kind of impressions were you getting to go find her? I guess religious people would say the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost or something giving you that, like, do this. And so I was like, oh man, okay, we're, we're listening. We are going, we're just gonna go. But it was very clear. It was extremely clear. Christy and Sue met up at the canal just before midnight and started walking along with flashlight and lantern in hand, still thinking there was little chance they would find anything. Then suddenly they saw movement, an arm coming up from the canal. It's a little up there, you saw, we could see Des's little hand come up. They were stunned when they saw it was Desiree. I was just freaking out a little bit. I was gonna call you. This is the actual phone call Christy made to a friend. I went looking for her and I found her. <laughs> I mean, she was alive and everything, but she had a gunshot wound in her head. Desiree had been laying in that freezing cold, muddy ditch for eight hours. Her body was so cold. Her body temperature was just 76 degrees. That could have been her end. It could have been a memorial place. Right. What was your reaction when you saw her? Relief was my first feeling, I think, and just like happiness that we found her. And Shock and disbelief at the same time, because it's like you see this arm and you're so instantly it's, holy crap, she's there, but she's alive. The two immediately called police and then called April. Uh, around 1240. Christy had called me and she's like, we found her. I'm like, what? She's like, we found her. I'm like, you really did? You found her? She's like, yeah. Sue then put the phone up to Desiree's ear. The power of a mother's voice to her child. You know, Des was very slow to respond to me, but as soon as April's voice came through that phone, it was like, it was a, like a breath of life was being breathed into Des from her mom. And so she was able to audibly say a couple more words, but you could tell her whole body went from like, just totally hurt and tired and exhausted to, I'm gonna fight. And fight she did. She proved them wrong and she proved everybody else wrong when all the odds were against her. Coming up, the power and strength to not only live, but to carry on. I have felt Christ carry me through my hard times. He's been there to comfort me. April 20th, 2017, a day of celebration. Nine weeks ago, we did not know if this was possible. 14-year-old Desiree Turner was finally leaving Primary Children's Hospital after 63 days, 12 of those days in the ICU. Words cannot express our joy and gratitude to so many on this special day. We know that our prayers and those of many others have been answered. Only family and close friends truly knew the miracle of this occasion. After getting shot in the head and left fighting for her life in this freezing canal for eight hours, Desiree had come here with little hope of survival. I am so thankful to be here today, to be alive. She couldn't even move, speak, or eat when she arrived at the hospital. I was there 63 days, I never came home. Her mother never left her side. I never imagined that she would be injured, laying helpless you know, shot in the head, left for dead. She had to relearn everything. She had to learn how to open her eyes. She had to learn how to hold her own head up. She had to learn how to sit. She had to learn how to stand. She had to learn how to walk. She had to learn how to eat. That is when I really learned how to talk to God, is I would be laying there in the hospital bed, not able to move, but I knew that I could talk to God. And that gave her power to press on when she returned home. 
Trying to grab it. Everyday simple tasks. Ugh, keep trying. Took days, weeks, months, and even years of practice. So tell me what this does, Desiree. So it just moves my arms. I'm working on balance with the tension. And, and some movements moving my arm may never return. I have to think about it. The bullet left Des partially paralyzed and blind on her left side. I could see before my injury. I am half blind. Can you see me okay? I can see you. You're right in my line of vision. But you can't see I over. I can't see any of th anything to the left. My arm and my leg were paralyzed. Well, technically my whole left side. So that included my internal organs too. Okay, snips. Come on. But still, Des pushed through it all in incredible ways. Hey, make sure you drop your phones off in the back. Graduating with her class, even though she missed nearly two years of school. Thank you so much. We were there in May of 2020 as Des celebrated her high school graduation day, COVID style, with a drive-by party. Thank you. Oh my God. She has fought the hardest battles, and she's a tough kid. You're amazing. You really are. God gave me this personality of don't quit, never give up, and I can't just stop. That's not me. I can't just stop. But even today, Desiree still admits the road has not been an easy one. It's been very painful and emotionally difficult to get back to some normalcy. Some days I, I am mad and I'm really just angry at the world, but then that doesn't solve any problems. It was especially painful when Desiree had to come here for the court proceedings. This is where she had to come face to face with the boys who shot her. What kind of person are you? You shot me in cold blood and then left me to die. Both boys were sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. For Desiree, the pain to forgive is still a battle today. Where are you at in that stage? There's some days when I'm, I'm having a good day, I'm like, okay, I can forgive them. And then there's some days that I'm just not having it. But despite the pain, despite all the headaches and nightmares and flashbacks and the physical disabilities, 19-year-old Desiree Turner continues to set and meet new goals. And for the women who found her lying in that canal. My heroes, definitely my heroes. I love them so much. That is a miracle behind all of this. She just keeps defying the odds, you know, even after surgeries, after everything, she just breaks through those barriers and it's like, I can accomplish this. That's part of what makes Des so strong is she could have had this happen to her and completely given up and said, you know what, it's not worth it. The pain is just, you know, she has headaches all the time. She could have just given up and said, screw it. These boys stole everything from me. I'm gonna let them, but she didn't. So now we're gonna turn the time over to Sister Turner. Desiree's now latest accomplishments. She's turned to page 25. She's now a missionary. Coming up. I believe that a mission has actually been a miracle for her. Desiree gets to live her lifelong dream. A small, but mighty force gathered inside a chapel in Smithfield. Thank you everyone for coming to Mission Conference today. Young men and young women who have been called to the Cash North Mission and set apart as full-time missionaries. So now we're all gonna stand and say our missionary purpose. For the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Our purpose is to help others come unto Christ by serving them as the Savior would. The only difference, they are not proselyting missionaries but service missionaries. If you have your handbooks, please turn to page 25. One of these missionaries, Sister Desiree Turner. I'll read it and please follow along. A young woman who is amazed she's still able to live out her childhood dream of being a missionary. It's a real shocker if you like think about what my injury is and what my life should be. I should be a vegetable. I should not be able to talk. I should not be able to walk. I love this place. This is my favorite assignment. As a church service missionary, Sister Turner lives at home. Slice bread goes on top. And is able to set her own schedule. Wonderful. To go out in the community and serve. Sister, do you want to help me with this? One of Sister Turner's favorite places, the Cache County Food Pantry a place that serves about 600 families a month. So you do a little bit of an inspection? Uh-huh. Providing them much needed meals. 
I love this place. I guess I just like helping people and knowing that these people are gonna eat a meal. Five across, four on top. She says service calms the mind and helps her to forget her own troubles. It was five years ago when Sister Turner was shot in the back of the head. The bullet is still there. She was not expected to survive, but managed to pull through after 63 days in the hospital. I get inside my head a lot. I, I should have done this, I should have done that. And you can't go back in time, so there's really no point. But when I'm out here, I lose myself in the work. Mission accomplished. Double bump with one hand. Yes. And when she's not at the food pantry, Oh, man. She can be found at the Children's Justice Center, helping with the stuffed animals that are given to kids who have been victims of crime. Oh, and there's more. Giving back to an organization that helped her over the years as she recovered and went through her own court proceedings. Turn to page 13, because that's where we'll be at today, 13. Another place she loves to serve, at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, Seminary Institute building on the campus of Utah State University. There we go. Is that better? Here, Sister Turner is a peer tutor. You're welcome. For the Adaptive Needs Seminary class. I. This semester, they are learning about the Old Testament. Go to verse 2 this time with your buddies. And she helps her partner navigate the class. Do you know what that word is? The teacher says Sister Turner has been a blessing. She has a gift because uh, she was able to uh, connect with her so well and they get along so good. She's an inspiration to all of us. President Todd Ballard is Sister Turner's stake president. He's inspired by what she's been able to accomplish. She has a very passion about herself when she sets her mind to something and she's, I think she's a little perfectionist by the way, you know. I really like service because you get to meet new people and hear their stories and you realize that there's a lot of people out there who have a lot of hard trials in life. When we walk the steps that the Savior walked, it helps us become like him and come unto him. Mission leaders, so Elder and Sister here, Tombs, have actually known the Turner family for years. And they remember that dreadful day in February 2017 very well when Sister Turner was shot. Five years later. The scars can heal and reveal. They never guessed they'd be leading a mission and Desiree would be one of their missionaries. It's really quite a treat. And I believe that a mission has actually been a miracle for her. It's given her an extra strength and extra abilities. She is such an amazing young lady. <clears throat> to see what she has been through and to see the joy in her eyes as she goes out and serves, it's just such a blessing, not only to her, but to those of us around her to see that you can conquer things in life. One of Sister Turner's keys to conquering the trials in her life? Can we have a flowers. Tiny bouquet. Coming up, how Sister Turner is using flowers to help heal the soul and help to change other people's lives. About 10 miles outside of the town of Logan is a small northern Utah town of Amalga. Population, 356. Home to the Turner family, a family of seven, one boy and four girls, who have suddenly become big fans. Oh, look at this pretty pink flower. Of flowers and plants. We have an acre field of plants, and so that's a lot of plants. All because of Desiree, who runs her very own flower nursery set up on the family property and then donates these flowers to others. I just like to make other people smile and I know that flowers make me smile so they can make other people smile. For Desiree, the flowers and plants all throughout her home represent the beauty of new life, new beginnings, and the power of survival. And they're growing. Surprisingly, they came up during this mild winter. Flowers can survive so many harsh weather situations. Deadheading is when you sacrifice the old blooms so new blooms can come up. I was a really pretty bloom before, and then I got cut down, but now I'm growing and blooming even brighter than before. I am the gardener over my garden, and I know each and every name of plant that I have growing in my garden, just like the Savior knows each and every name of who we are. I feel the Savior's love. I feel his comfort. And I, I feel it every day when, when I'm having the hard times. I know he's there to help me. 
the Savior has also brought comfort, <laughs> smiles, and laughter back to the entire Turner family. I'm Brandon Turner. I'm 25. I'm Dez's oldest and only brother. I'm Lizzie Turner. I'm Desiree's older sister. I'm Maddie Turner. I am one of Dez's younger sisters. Casey Turner, I am the youngest sister. Every one of Desiree's siblings had to go through their own pain and heartache of dealing with what happened to their sister. I had PTSD. I had to go to counseling for multiple years. Oh, it's, it's my job as an older brother to take care of her, and I wasn't there, and that, that really hurt. We were kind of left, like our parents were always gone and just had to grow up, had to do what I had to do every day. I get one-handed one privileges. A family once left in ruins and heartbreak, only to now blossom like a rose. It's 100% brought us closer together and we are all super, super strong, like mentally, physically, emotionally. <laughs> What's the future for Desiree Turner? There's so many things that I could do. You can't wait to be better, to make your life better. I suffer with emotions, pain every day, but I'm still going out and making my life the fullest as I can. I know that if I were to sit back and wait till the pain goes away, I wouldn't be living a life. <laughs> a can-do attitude that has inspired so many others. She's gone from a girl with a shaved head who couldn't like barely open her eyes to where she's now serving a mission. She has her own little organization to give flowers to people. She's just so amazing. Amazing and definitely tougher than a bullet.